was Lemmy, so-called godfather of heavy metal, with Motorhead, whom he once described as the dirtiest rock and roll band in the world. Lemmy is one of the great characters of rock music, a former member of the Rockin' Vickers, who wore dog collars, and for some reason, the national costume of Finland, Lemmy has really lived out. He endured his famous song, Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll. When, when you formed Motorhead back in 1965, you said, Motorhead will be the dirtiest rock and roll band in the world. We are. If we move next door, your lawn would die. It has. <laughs> so you've achieved that ambition. <laughs> no, I knew I was on safe ground there because the place I was moving into had a concrete lawn next door, so <laughs> it couldn't be proved wrong. Um, I think we are the, the, the raunchiest mob in the world, I think. I can't imagine anybody else that comes close except perhaps ACDC, or ZZ Top, people like that. They're pretty raunchy, but we're not, I mean, they're not in this corner of the world, you know, so that's all right. Why do you think the fans like you? Because it's obvious that they could grow up into being me if they're not careful, you know. I mean, I'm not uh, a star, you know. I don't have a limo waiting outside. I don't have a burly person behind me fighting people off. I go down the marquee, you know, and whatever. I go down to gigs. I go out in the crowd and watch the gig, you know. How do the fans react to you when they, when they see you in the, the local pub down in Notting Hill or they... Well, they usually get you? the double take, you know. Yeah. And then, the, yeah, no, it is. yes, it is, it is. Well, ask him then, you know. And then they come up and they say, yeah, uh, my mate says you're Lemmy, is that right? I say, might be. They go, it is, isn't it? Didn't give us a straight answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, why not, you know? But you, but you are kind of the, the godfather of heavy metal, I would have thought. <laughs> Kiss the ring. Um, I would have thought that the fans would feel kind of distance from you. Well, they can't if you're in the same boozer, can they? Emotionally. Emotionally? Yeah. Emotionally distant? Hmm. No, I'm emotionally closer to the fans than I am in any other way. Because I still feel like... I, I, I remember how it felt to be a fan, right? I was in the Beatles fan club, mate, me. And I used to go, you know, to all the Gene Vincent gigs and stuff like that when he was living over here and all that. I love it, you know. So that's... Uh, we're more or less the same people. So, what does heavy metal mean to you? It means never being able to get any reviews of your music. You get reviews of your bullet belt, and you get reviews of how loud it was, and you get reviews of what the crowd looked like, and you get reviews of how ugly you were, or you didn't have a shave that day, but you very rarely get anybody taking your music apart and looking at it, you know, ever. Whereas they love to analyse stuff that I think is vastly inferior because it has the right haircut or whatever, you know. Like all this stuff today that is obviously, in the 60s or the 70s, you would have just laughed at it, you know, because it's so banal, it's just hopeless. Do you consider that you're a kind of part of a, a dying breed of, of rock and roller? I mean, there aren't many rock and rollers like you that are left. What do you mean intelligent? I, I don't know um, in what way you're looking at that. Could you clarify that, Nicky? Well, in, <laughs> in, terms, in terms of your lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Right. The way that you live, mm -hmm. uh, your attitude to your music. Oh, scruffy, you mean? <laughs> you, yeah. you are a rock and roller. <clears throat> and there aren't many rock and rollers like you left. Well, there aren't many people who remember <clears throat> rock and roll, you know, left in the music business. What, what there is are people who came up post Beatles, more or less, what you've got. Pardon me, everybody. Can't help myself. Um, I always loved rock and roll. I'm in love with rock and roll, you know. I mean, I can't keep a relationship with a woman going for more than a year because it just don't work in this business. You can't have the little woman on tour with you because that really doesn't work, you know. Um, 
it's too tedious to go into why it doesn't, but it, believe me, it doesn't, you know. I've seen all sorts of bands fall to bits because the little woman was rabbiting in somebody's ear, you know. Because you came from a fairly sort of middle-class upbringing, yeah. didn't yeah. you? How come you've kind of turned out like this? This is middle-class. Haven't you noticed? This is, this is it. There's, there's more people like this in the in the suburban homes of England than anybody realises, and soon we shall take over the world. Do you consider yourself middle class? I don't consider class. You know, I consider myself rock and roll, which is classless. Well, it isn't, but heavy metal is, you know, whatever you want to call it. Does your mum ever come to the geeks? We come to sound checks now and again, but... Uh, it's a bit loud for them, you know, I mean, my father's 80 now, my stepfather and my mother's over 70. I'm not getting any younger, you know. Do you feel age approaching? No, I don't feel it, no. Other people feel my age approaching them sometimes. I, uh, I think this is the only business I could be in and look this good, you know, for 38 years old. I mean, if I worked in a bank, I'd look 90, you know. I'd like to talk to you about your, your image. I wondered if oh, you yes, ever, that, yes. Well, I, I wondered if you ever wanted to look, say, like Brian Ferry or, or Mick Jagger, you know, sort of... Oh, yes, I'd love to look like Brian Ferry. That's been one of the great disappointments, actually, that nobody ever mistakes me for Brian Ferry, you know. <laughs> I do look up to Brian Ferry in a big way, you know. I tend to put him underneath a pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> but, but do you like the way you look? Oh, obviously, you couldn't live with this if you didn't, could you? You've kind of abused your body for oh, yeah. a long time. Regular thrashing. Yeah. And you look really quite healthy. Yeah, but most people who've done what I've done don't. I mean, a lot of people... It's, uh, it's partly to do with what you take out of what's offered. You have to be selective, you know? And I've been offered heroin a lot, and I've never had it. Not even, not even once, because uh, I've got at least 300 good friends, and intelligent people too, it's not morons that do it. I've got at least three or 400 good friends who are, are dead now, because of heroin, or, you know, might as well be, because um, it just takes everything away from me, that stuff. And, and, I'm, and I haven't been bribed, everybody, I hate heroin, and if I see anybody doing heroin at one of our gigs, I'll snap the needle in his arm and push the short end in. That'll stop him fixing very well. What would you want your epitaph to be? He enjoyed himself. <laughs> he had a great time, bye-bye. Don't cry over me. If I died tonight, I couldn't complain. I've had a hell of a time. You really do enjoy rock and roll, don't you? Yeah. It's the only religion I've found that never lets you down. <laughs>